Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss how you can have transaction control inside a stored procedure, okay? And if you are working in stored procedure domain for processing the data which is stored in S3 or Snowflake internal stage, then this particular transaction inside Snowflake procedure can help you in building your data pipeline, okay? So what we are going to do, we are going to write a very simple stored procedure which I will show you. So first we are having a table called IDs dataset and I will just run this one and show you the data which is a very popular IDs dataset data which is having first column as ID which is integer. Then sepal length, sepal with petal length, petal with all these columns are double type or float type and last column is basically string type or varicate type. Okay. Now what we will do, we will basically insert the data in another table IDs dataset 2 from this particular table id data set okay so we are going to create the same schema okay and then here id data set 2 is created and then what we will do we will in insert the data from this id data set to id data set 2 using our stored procedure okay right so let us see our stored procedure so the stored procedure looks like this create or replace procedure demo stored procedure Return type is string, not null, language, JavaScript, whatever our common template we generally follow for writing stored procedure, same thing we are using here. Then here we are creating a MySQL command, which is nothing but insert into our ID status set 2 as select star from our ID status set table where ID less than equal to 80. So in our actual ID status set, the first column was ID column, right, which is kind of auto increment value. So we want to basically push all the data or insert all the data from id dataset to id dataset 2 table if the id is less than equal to 8 okay we are preparing this statement and we are executing that okay then what we are doing we are basically waiting for 10 seconds okay using system dollar wait we are waiting for 10 seconds we are executing that so this particular command will make kind of sleep or and it will just wait for 10 seconds and after the 10 second is over, we are inserting all those data from ID dataset to our ID dataset 2 table, which is having ID greater than 10. That means in simple words, whatever there in ID dataset, we have basically split it into two parts. One is ID less than equal to 80, one is ID greater than 80. And initially we are loading all the data, which is having ID less than equal to 80. Then we are making a pause for 10 seconds. Then we are loading all the data for which ID is greater than 80. From ID dataset to ID dataset to table. Okay. And then here we are executing this statement and we are returning the. Okay. Now here you can see easily we have not specified any transaction uh, kind of behavior in our code. So just think this way. Suppose this particular part is executed. Okay. So what will happen? If this part is executed, then in our ID dataset to table, from ID dataset table, all those records or rows will be getting inserted which will satisfy this condition right okay cool and then it will go to wait time for 10 seconds okay in the middle suppose i terminate that particular sql query if i abort that sql execution what will happen this particular lower part that is this insert of data which is having id greater than 80 will not be executed but whatever inserted earlier before terminating the query that is this particular insert those data will be available in our id dataset 2 table right and that's where the transaction processing comes okay so here what is happening because we are not applying any transaction level architecture in the code that's why although our this whole procedure will be getting terminated in the middle but whatever data got inserted due to execution of the first query it will be still there although our stored procedure we will terminate okay because it will be auto committing right but if we add transaction control then what would happen that suppose this insert query is executed under a particular transaction and then when the system is waiting for 10 seconds then if we terminate the stored procedure then it will make a rollback okay that kind of architecture also i'm going to show you okay so let's first see that. So first what I will do, I will just run this demo stored procedure. As of now, it is correct. And then here what we are doing, we are calling this stored procedure. Before that, if you want to see that in ID status is 2, currently no data is there, okay. And then here we started calling this, okay. It started running, okay. Let's wait for a few seconds so that the first insert will be executed. Already 3 seconds is over. 
and then six second and now I will abort the execution. Okay, so ex SQL execution cancelled, right? Now because I have not enabled the transaction control, so whatever data was inserted from the ID dataset table to ID dataset two table due to first insert query, those will be there. If I execute that here, you will see eighty one rows are there, where maximum ID is. Here you can see it is eighty, right? It is not rollback, right? Because transaction is not enabled. Now we will see how to enable transaction in the uh, stored procedure. Okay, so this same stored procedure we have written here. This time we have written inside try catch block. Okay, so try block how we are writing? First we are executing a SQL query where we are starting a transaction which is having name demo one. Okay, simple. Under once this transaction, this particular start transaction query is executed. Then we started inserting these records from our IDs dataset table to IDs dataset two table. As a result, what will happen that this insert is happening inside the transaction. If we cancel the SQL query, then it will be having a rollback, and our IDs dataset two table will not have any single record. Okay, and then here we are calling the system dollar wait. For ten second wait, and then we are inserting the rest of the record. Okay, and then at the end we are committing the transaction because we have started the transaction here. If we are not committing, then we will not be getting the data, right? So here we are committing that. Okay, and then here we are returning done. That is the process is done. And then the catch block. If suppose your stored procedure throws error in the main body part, what you can do in the catch block, you can just apply rollback query. So that whatever records got inserted, updated, deleted, whatever operation happened, those can be reverted back. Okay, that's why we are executing rollback in the catch block. Okay, and no need to think about auto commit parameter in the context of stored procedure how we are writing. Okay, because although if in your environment auto commit is enabled as parameter, then also if you are executing some SQL query inside a explicitly mentioned transaction, then auto commit will not work. Okay. Because this insert query, we are executing inside one transaction, so we no need to think about the auto commit parameter present in Snowflake environment. Okay, right? So now what I will do, I will just execute create or replace table once more. Okay, so that it will become empty. Whatever records are there, loaded, those will be getting cleared. And then here, what I am doing, I am running that stored procedure again. Okay, and then here, what I will do, I will basically call this stored procedure. Right? That is whatever stored procedure we have created with transaction enabled. Okay, so here I will run, and then here you see it started running. Okay, so three second got over, and then here six second also got over. I will abort this, and see now what it is showing. Stored procedure execution error. Scope transaction started in this stored procedure is incomplete, and it was rolled back. Okay, because in the middle we stopped the execution, so kind of it got interrupted. And it rolled back all the occurrence, all the insert query. Okay, so now if I do select start from ID dataset two, here you will see zero record only. Earlier, when in the middle we were aborting or basically terminating the SQL execution, what was happening? Due to the first insert part, whatever records got inserted, those were present here, right? Because auto commit, it was auto committed. But this time, because we have executed the first insert and all other statement inside this transaction. Okay, and because it we stopped in the middle, so it got interrupted, and that's why it got rolled back in the catch block. Right? Very simple concept. I hope you understood this. Now, if you want, you can basically again make a clear ID dataset two table, and then you can call the procedure again, so that now if you wait till end, automatically all the insert queries will be executed with the sleep time whatever we are mentioning, and after that it will be committed. Once it is committed, we can see the data in IDs dataset two table. Okay, I can show you that also. Maybe select star from IDs dataset two table. Okay, select star from IDs dataset two table. I will be showing you. Okay, and see here beautifully one hundred fifty one records is there. So basically, the same data whatever present in IDs dataset, I just inserted in two partitions. Okay. First part only insert those data which is having ID less than equal to eighty, and next part for ID greater than eighty. If you want, you can check that both tables are same using hash aggregate. If you just run this query, here you will see this written. In. That means ID greater than and ID greater than two is having basically same data, right? And this is how you can basically apply the concept of 
transaction in stored procedure. All you have to remember in the beginning of the stored procedure, you have to execute start transaction so that all the inside executions, whatever you will be doing in the main part of the stored procedure, all will be happening inside transaction. And then at the end, you have to make sure you are committing that so that the all the insert update delete will be permanently saved. And in the catch block, if error occurs, then you can put the rollback query, right? This is all for my this video. If you want to know the fundamental concept related to transaction processing in SQL in Snowflake, then you can check the link given in the description box. I'll be sharing the link of the video what I explained in our earlier discussion, right? And all these course, whatever we have used today, I will be sharing also in the description box so that you can use the same code, play with it, and apply in your business requirement. Okay. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment, subscribe our channel if you are not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.